Professor Reg Revens pursued his early career as a research scientist, a physicist, uh, working with some of the leading minds of his time at the Cavendish Laboratories in Cambridge. One of the significant views that he developed through this experience was that those people who were often defined by others as leading experts um, would actually achieve some of their most significant breakthroughs in terms of their thinking by not necessarily seeking to demonstrate that they were more clever than their colleagues, but actually recognising that they were united in their ignorance. After World War II, Revens took on the challenge of formulating the education policy for the coal industry in the UK. Uh, this at the time was the largest organisation in the world, employing one million men. Revens was able to introduce some of the key thinking that he had developed in the past, particularly around ideas of, of action learning. So he believed that rather than being able to send managers um, and miners uh, away to business schools that were evolving uh, rapidly at the time, that the best way of, most practical way of developing them would be to, to bring them together in uh, what he called action learning sets, uh, small groups of people who would seek to help each other in both defining and then addressing the problems which they faced. So by meeting on a regular basis uh, in action learning sets, they would then um, move beyond the set back to their real work situation and introduce changes um, or improvements and then report back to their action learning set to share the outcomes. So this would be a continuous cycle of, of action, reflection and learning. But a key principle here is that the theory would follow the action and there was always a real world problem or issue that needed to be addressed and uh, by working together as comrades in adversity as he referred to it and being united in their ignorance uh, they were often able to achieve uh, significant breakthroughs and insights which would lead to significant uh, improvements, uh, both in terms of productivity, uh, costs, technology improvements, etc. Evans clearly believed in the value of people uh, learning with and from others, rather than simply learning from uh, theory. Uh, that's not to say he felt there was no place for theory. After all, his early career was as a research physicist, so uh, theory had an important part to play. However, in terms of management and organisational problems, he recognised the importance of people coming together and learning uh, in groups with and from each other and seeking to help each other uh, with, with problems. So he took uh, this thinking into a number of organisations and a number of countries, in fact, and uh, achieved some great success. The Hospital Internal Communications Project was established with 10 hospitals in the London area uh, towards the end of the 1960s. And this gave Revens an opportunity to further uh, implement much of his thinking around the significance of action learning in order to address some of the very real uh, organisational management and leadership problems that these hospitals were facing. Initially the project was greeted with great scepticism from some quarters. However, Revens recognised the fact that uh, organisations such as hospitals very much operated as a system. What he observed initially was that this was a system essentially designed around top-down communication and uh, his sense was that uh, the power of action learning 
came not so much from the downward communication of certainty as he saw it in the existing culture, uh, but from the upward communication of doubt. This is an interesting concept and he could see clearly that there were barriers in terms of communication um, upwards and downwards between the uh, nursing staff and of course between nursing staff and uh, clinicians. Uh, he, he viewed the hospital as a system and in, in many ways uh, his thinking uh, predated a lot of the subsequent work uh, that has been done on the idea of the organisation as a system and systems thinking and systems theory. So with the hospital's project, what Revens did was encourage the organisation itself, the hospital itself and its staff, to define and research their own problems rather than expect that some intervention would be made by consultants or external experts. He talked about the idea of autotherapeutic organisations in other words, the organisation itself uh, was to define specific problems which might be different from one hospital to the next or different uh, within a particular hospital. But by bringing people together to define the problem, to research it and then to effect change, ultimately what was achieved were some tremendous results, both in terms of some hard measurable factors um, such as the uh, length of stay of patients, um, the reduction of costs, and, and these were not necessarily the initial objectives. Um, the problems that were tackled were addressed by initially defining the specific problems, and then the benefits um, were ultimately achieved and uh, recognised.